So today I would like to discuss indeed my research on, on my PhD. So can children learn a second language from a robot, robot tutor? And you can see the robot that I used on the left, uh, that's the now robot and a very young child next to the robot on this slide. Um, but first, before I want to start with my talk, I would like to go to the year 2030. So that's 10 years, almost 10 years in the future. And I would to take, um, want you to imagine the classroom of the future. So typically when you think about teaching and education, you see a teacher in front of a classroom and you see children inside the classroom. And the teacher is teaching the children um, in front of them, in front of uh, the teacher. However, when I look at the future, I see that there's a robot next to the teacher that can help the teacher during uh, the day uh, when there are problems. Because if we look at classrooms in day-to-day -day life and also over the past three years, we see that there are many, many, many children uh, entering the classrooms and our teachers um, in front of a larger classroom, classrooms are getting bigger. Um, and the work pressure is also getting higher for the teachers. Um, because these children are there in the room, there are so many children, they all are uh, different. They have individual differences. Um, there are many children who have learning difficulties. Uh, there are children ahead of other children. Children come from different countries. They don't know the language yet. There are all these typical uh, differences between all these children. And when there's only one teacher in front of the classroom, it's difficult to cope with all these um, uh, deficits, with all these problems. So my suggestion is that the teacher can point at a certain child and say, well, are you, you can go and play with the robots, um, practice the material that we just uh, um, taught. And then after you practice it with the robots, you can come back to the classroom and then we can continue our lesson. And in that way, all the children can practice on their own with their own problem, problems and they get some kind of individualized content. My name is Miriam de Haas, as Maria already said, and I work in the El Tutor project. And the El Tutor project was a project um, where we taught uh, children a second language using the NAO robot. Um, and it was a European project with six universities and two companies. One of the companies also created the robot many years back. And um, yeah, we developed many, many, many experiments uh, and a program for children to, uh, to work with, with the robot. And in the Netherlands, we focused on two particular target groups. We focused on Dutch children learning English and immigrant children learning Dutch. Um, and so if you look at that large classroom, for example, um, the world is becoming more international and um, people are moving around to different countries and they take their children with them, their family take with them. And then um, there might be children in the classroom who don't speak the language yet, the academic language yet. So then the robot can help. Um, these immigrant children learning Dutch. And in the same way, because the, the world becomes more international, English becomes more important. And it's um, a good idea to start early in a, at an early age with teaching children English, especially because when you learn languages at an early age, you um, will be, become more proficient in the language. And in this presentation, uh, I will focus on Dutch children learning English. So we already know from many, many studies that children can learn from robots. Um, their robots can teach children uh, many stuff and they're quite good at it, as you can see um, in a review, where um, we basically saw that robots are almost as good as human tutors. Of course, these are published um, papers, so let's take this uh, with a bit of salt. Um, but uh, and the, 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 the experiments were, of course, also designed in particular for the robots to be as good as possible. But we, can, we did see that children can learn from robots already from the past three years. However, we're now at a stage, at a point in the, in the research that there is a need for longer term studies. So there should be more studies that have repeated interactions where children over time um, um, learn together with the robot and we can see how this interaction develops over time. Because when you... Um, when you show children uh, a robot, and maybe that's even the case, or that is even the case with adults as well, that if you show that robot for the first time, the interest peaks. So there's a large novelty effect where people are interested in the robot, the engagement goes up, people are very, very interested in the robot, but over time that decreases because if the robot does the same thing the whole time again, 
then yeah, people are less engaged with the robot over time. So it is very important to uh, look at the robot during a longer time, a uh, longer period. So this is what we did during the l project. We uh, finished the project with a large scale experiment with many, many children, and uh, all children had seven lessons. Uh, so that's a um, one month experiment where children saw the robot two times a week. And they um, were practicing different English words together with the robot. And there was a tablet in front of them displaying the content, the environment of the words uh, that they were learning. So uh, for example, dragging more. So they had to drag animals into cages in the top right image, but also the words like sliding on a playground or throwing a ball. So those kind of words children learned. And um, something that we were particularly interested in is the comparison of a robot versus its tablet screen, because children, they, they know how to work with screens. They know how to use a phone, they know how to use a tablet or a laptop or anything. But the advantage of having a robot there is that it is a robot is a physical, physical entity. So there is something in the room that knows what you're talking about. And it has these um, arms and legs and, and hands, where it can display images or um, gestures with. So for example, the, the example on the screen is a word monkey, the robot can actually use his arms and his hands, his body to express the words, to depict the meaning of the word monkey with an iconic gesture. So we use that to test whether that actually works and whether children would learn more when the robot would use these gestures um, than versus a robot who did not use these gestures. Um, this is another example that we used. So the word heavy and that the robot would express the word, uh, would use a gesture for the word heavy. What we found was, well, we have these two words and we have these uh, gestures. However, um, some words are more iconic. You can express them in a more iconic way. So the word for, um, for the gesture for monkey is very, very iconic. You can immediately see that it's a monkey when a robot does this gesture. But when the robot is using the gesture for heavy, it's a little bit less iconic because it can also be low, for example, or something else or high because it's also moving his hands and um, up. So there's a little bit less iconic. And we also saw that in the results. We saw that children did learn more words with a robot using iconic gestures for a very iconic concept like monkey, but less um, they learned less words when the robot was using an iconic gesture for a less iconic uh, word, such as heavy or um, other words. But what we did find was that children were more engaged with a robot, but there was a slight um, uh, difference there. The children were more task engaged with the robot without gestures. So they were more focused on the task on the tablet when the robot wasn't, make, wasn't making gestures, but they were more engaged with the robot when the robot was using gestures, which kind of makes sense because if just a robot is standing next to you and it's just talking to you and not using any gestures, it makes sense that you're focusing on the task more. And when the robot is using fun gestures to look at, it makes sense that you have more interest next to the tablet. But what was interestingly, interestingly uh, we did see that both of these engagements correlated with second language word knowledge. So children did learn in both uh, situations more words when they were engaged either with the task or the robots than when they were, um, uh, were not so engaged. So when we go back to the future, Back to the future. Yeah, that's a, a strange sentence and a familiar one. Um, so when we go back to the, the year 2030, and we think of the robots um, in the classroom. So something is, so what I can say now is that we have to look into these gestures more. We have to look into the physical body of the robot and the, the embodiment of the robot, how it helps children in their learning um, more. So maybe using motivational gestures, for example, if iconic gestures don't work for the different topics. Um, but then if we have that information, we can actually use that robot in a classroom uh, to help individualize or to help children. Well, thank you.